Hello, this is a small presentation or demonstration on my Willow Tree um, asset that I built in Houdini USD. And yeah, it's it's just a demo, nothing else and not very um, detailed in the placements of those trees. Um, it's just scattered random on the grid and in that case it's really mind-blowing and sometimes unbelievable what you can do with USD and Render Man. And I will start in this video by showing the entire tree, the willow tree that I built. It has roughly about 200 million polygons. It's currently calculating the process tree. And yeah, maybe I need to deactivate that. So as you can see, um, all the leaves in the background get um, blended out because they are too much uh, for the viewport. It's limited to 150 million polys. And when I zoom in, you see that each leaf is a full geometry. So yes, there is a texture on, on top of each each one but it's a full it's the full thing so we can move through it there are no um, image patches with transparency and and stuff like that so I can also show you um, the basics of the of each each one so one has roughly 70 polygons and we have yeah quite a lot of them so Going back to Solaris, um, just for demonstration, I created a grid. Um, uh, first of all, I saved it to component. So this is a USD asset now. I activated um, displacements for all the trees. Um, I yeah accessed it in the custom displacement, so I can dial down the displacements on various parts of the of the mesh. And then I instance it, and I also integrated uh, variations into the into the shader for each leaf. So we have um, a randomize, which uh, randomize node, which is set to each ID. So each single leaf has a different color or a different luminance in that case. And 10% on the top side of each leaf and roughly 25% difference or variation um, range for the bottom side of each leaf. So we have two-sided shading. And yeah, so I did the usual stuff. I loaded the the proxies, this is the proxy that I created, very rough. Um, I activated displacements as usual in um, Solaris Renderman. Um, use the explore variance, set the spacing to zero to, yeah, in case I have multiple versions. Currently I have only one a variant of this tree, but I will build additional ones, so it doesn't matter in the end. And then I created a copy, two points, a basic grid, one kilometer by one kilometer, and scattered um, with a density of, yeah, a very small density, of roughly 1,035 trees. And because of the displacements, it will calculate um, it will take yeah a minute or two in in the first uh, in the first moment when I start the render, but then it will probably go very really fast in comparison in relation to the amount of data that you see. I mean each tree has displacements, and yeah, a couple hundred millions of leaves. I I, I don't know how to count them. So, I saved it and started this. This was my first test. 
So also in the rendering will start in a couple of seconds. Um, it's normal that it will, um, yeah, the, the speed will increase over time since rendermen need to load all the um, MIP files or the scaled down versions in the textures. So here we start. Um, keep in mind that I only use half of, of, of my cores since the interactive rendering can only use half of the cores. Only the final render to disk can access all other um, CPUs. So it's limited to 50%. And as you can see, it's, it's right rendering now. And maybe I changed the light a bit. It's too dark. So. And so we have the camera and maybe I try to move down here. I have also uh, the focus activated, I guess, but I, I will look at this in a couple of seconds. I will move too, too fast. So here we have, I have also the roots, so in case you need them, I can uh, deactivate them, but yeah, we have it. So, and here we have, yeah, maybe I should stop this for a second to better place the camera. And yeah, this is something I hate. Or I should not say hate, but I don't like in Houdini that um, rotating the camera is still always a problem. Sometimes it works and sometimes not. So maybe we can do a little animation. Flight, something like 24 frames. Oh, maybe we should go much further oh wow yeah that's that's so annoying but yeah you always need to click on the geometry when you when you move the camera so otherwise it will yeah move somewhere else so and here we have the full the full um scenery something like that so and now we have the ability to move the camera a bit maybe maybe we can do it like that so once again save the file and here we go This is not speed up, so all the data is already in the in the RAM. When you restart Houdini, it takes a while, but everything is in the RAM. You see, the displacement is in place. It was really, really fast. And I will try now to move to another frame. And as you can see, it's already starting. Um, here we have it. So isn't that amazing? I mean, billions of polygons. And it's really, really fast. So we can go full screen. Oh, that was the wrong button. That's the right. Of course, it will take a lot longer when the image is a lot bigger now. But it works. It's not crashing at all. So we can 
minimize this Im image again. Yeah, it's a bit slow now because of the loading of all the instances. I also have to mention that all the instances and textures are on a HDD or SSHDD, uh, which is not that fast. But um, I think, yeah, RAM consumption for for those trees is 15 gigabytes, which is which is nothing. So I move back to the first one, and we'll activate some defocusing. So here we go to the f-stop. The f-stop should be something like 4 to have a realistic s feel. So shift f and here we have it right here. And in the background everything should be blurred out now. Uh, maybe 2. Yeah, it, it shouldn't be that blurred in reality, but it's not a, a tele um, lens, but so yeah, it's a it's a it's blurred a bit. So, but as you can see, it works. It renders a bit slow because of the data, but um, it's totally fine in the K. And when we move to one of those leaves, we should see something else, something more detailed. Maybe I can show you the detail a bit better without um, scattering those. It can crash now, but yeah, it has not crashed, which is nice. So, selecting it. Oh, wow. Uh, maybe we did that. Where is the tree? Here's the tree. That's not the tree. Yeah, I don't understand that. Sometimes you need to trick Houdini. We can even create a new camera, which is easier. So delete that, put that in here and call it one. So here we have the tree again and we smooch, switch over here and hit render. Oh, I forgot the environment. Yeah, it's blue now. Uh, where is it? Right here. And that's yeah, that's my first willow tree. The library is growing steadily. And yeah, let us move aggressive into those in this wall of foliage and all those trees are created in Houdini only so except the textures of course they are made in substance I try to yeah to create those trees and plants um, 
that they feel um, realistic to some extent but of course I will not go down to the tiniest bits because those trees are made for um, environmental image renderings so they don't need to have um, 10 centimeter close-up quality but I think they already have a really good quality so we should now see something some tiny bits of the textures so they are 2k texture one 2k texture or at least there are sh eight textures for PBR for each one Oh, what's happening right here? My phone is making noise. So, yeah, let's close up. And that's enough for environmental rendering. All those um, shadows on top of each leaf, uh, as well as, as you can see here, oh, wow, that's a very close up one. Um, and you see um, a subsurface scattering or um, yeah I integrated um, the translucency shader into the texture pro um, result it's really great to see how this is working and influencing each other of course Maybe I should um, change, raise the scattering a bit, work on it a bit more. But yeah, it, it, it doesn't look that bad, I think. So this is everything what I wanted to show you. And yeah, it's a bit dark here. And I wish everyone of you a nice day. Bye.